Innovation has been at the heart of what iBanks have done since the beginning. It is well documented that the collaboration between ophthalmologists and iBanks has driven the advancement and innovation of eye banking services for the last many decades. We've seen huge changes over the last 20 years in terms of how we are um, providing tissue and transplanting patients so that we can provide more precise and individualized care and treatment for patients with various corneal abnormalities. I can tell you that when we sit around the table and talk about what's next for Florida Lions Eye Bank, we're talking about innovation, we're talking about new technologies. So if we don't innovate, we're, we're done because that's the way we make things better is by innovation. And we need partners to innovate, we can't do it ourselves. For example, uh, we offer uh, a DSEC in an endoglide. We were the first to do that uh, almost eight years ago. We worked with Dr. Catherine Colby. Back in around 2012, I saw a tiny little blurb in one of the trade journals uh, about some work that the Lions um, Eye Bank in Tampa had done regarding tissue preloaded. It made a lot of intrinsic sense to me that people whose job it is to process tissue were going to be just much better at manipulating it and putting in an inserter than even the most busy endothelial keratoplasty surgeon was going to be. You may do four, five, six, you know, maybe 10 a month, where we can do 15, 20, as many as 30 a day. So I called Jason Woody and I said, you know, this is really amazing and I would like to be involved in testing it in people. And so now we are fast forwarding five years, we're planning World Cornea 2020, and like, of course, preloaded tissue is the best way to go. There's no other system in the world that makes it as simple to deliver the transplant into the eye at the time of surgery than transplant ready tissue, which was developed right here at Lions Eye Institute for Transplant and Research. There's very few surgeons now, and there's a couple, and they have their own preference, really that don't use transplant ready tissue. We would not be where we are today in the field of endothelial keratoplasty without the innovation of the eye banks and the partnering of the eye banks with corneal surgeons. Florida Lions Eye Bank relies on processing fees that we receive from corneal tissue to fund all of our programs. What that means is that any excess funds that are available to us at the end of the year are the funds that we use to support research, are the funds that we use to support innovation. They not only are able to provide with funding for the projects, but they also have the expertise, the know-how uh, that it's really helpful um, for many of our projects and, and I see that on, on, on every day. We have a research going on right now using uh, light therapy with a, diff with a certain chemical that's not an antibiotic. In order to activate this chemical, the organisms, uh, the bugs, they eat that and we kill it. And uh, uh, Florida Lions Eye Bank has been helping with support uh, to our lab. Together we've been making progress with this therapy and a lot of the funding has come from the Florida Lions Eye Bank. So all of the funds that come into the eye bank go back into programming, go back into community service, and go back to helping patients. And that's the way it is for all non-project eye banks. There is a narrative that innovation in eye banking is only going to come through a for-profit model. And I find that that's not at all true. I know the type of work that my members are doing, my non-profit eye banks are doing. Uh, that is moving the entire profession forward. And those eye banks have always worked together, uh, always collaborated for the purpose of improving the things that they do. So I think Leader is a great example of a nonprofit company that has worked with um, 22 different eye banks so that we can combine resources and be more successful in honoring the gift, the donated tissue. You think about donation, you think generosity, you don't think of the cornea as a commodity. You know, that is as far as it's something you buy off the shelf, it came from another human being. Tissue banking, eye banking, organ banking has always been an open model. And quite frankly, medicine in general has always been an open model. Whenever a surgeon comes up with a new technique, they publish it in a peer-reviewed journal. They don't get paid for publishing that. They might get paid if they invent a new instrument because they have a royalty off of people buying that instrument, but never is it restricted 
from being used by the rest of the medical community. You know, 20 years ago, as iBanks were discovering new tissue preparation techniques or tissue storage techniques, a lot of times, you know, iBank would find something and literally pick up the phone and say, I just learned this thing, and they either share it by conversation or say, hey, let's all get together at my iBank and I'll show you this new way of preparing tissue. It's like having a good joke, you know. It, we don't feel good if we don't tell someone that funny story. Otherwise, we keep it to ourselves. It doesn't have any value. Same thing with innovation and teaching. And I think doctors like that. If we have something we think works better, we want to write about it. We want to publish it. We want to tell our friends. I really think in a for-profit model, you're not going to have that access you know, because everything is going to be done behind closed doors because you can't let anybody know what you're innovating until you're ready to release it to the public because what if somebody runs with your idea? I think that the nonprofit iBanks need to start talking about what they have brought in terms of innovation and evolution uh, to the field. Uh, we're putting um, resources into those efforts and working and collaborating with surgeons to make sure that the next generation is, uh, has available to them techniques that are not available today. The current iBanking system that we have really has enabled us in the U.S. To, to be the leaders that we are in corneal transplantation. So I think to say that this can only be done by a for-profit entity is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not corporations, it's not buildings, it's not entities, it's individuals that make all the improvements, the innovations that we see. It's an individual that does that. Again, that gets back to just having a heart for making this better uh, and trying to reach out to all the surgeons involved and say, hey, what do you need? What do you want? And what can we do to try to improve it? Because that's their DNA and they are doing tremendous work because they've been in this for their entire lifetimes and they're committed to ensuring the best possible outcomes for patients. As guardians of the eye banking system, I hope that we will move forward to support the nonprofit system of eye banking to protect the interests of our patients and to preserve our roles as the purveyors of the gift of sight. Thank you.